Here we give the main findings from our epilepsy surgery paper using high density EEG with MEG source localization. The image of the surfer catching the earliest wave below signifies the importance of modeling the earliest resolvable electromagnetic signal for predicting the epileptogenic zone. Here's the setup with the EEG scalp electrode configuration top left. 94 electrodes, including an inferior array. The MEG sensor array, 306 sensors top right, combined spatial arrays of EEG and MEG bottom left. And bottom right is the compartmentalized boundary element method model comprising skin, outer and inner skull layers, and the tessellated cortical mantle. Slide three illustrates the importance of characterizing the earliest resolvable signal. By that I mean the source solution explaining at least 90% of the EEG potential field and or MEG field. Note the propagation that occurs at the maximum source current density solution from the earliest signal takeoff towards the peak. Note the angle one outcome demonstrated at the bottom right corner following discrete resection of the lesion, subsequently confirmed as a cortical dysplasia, the patient remaining seizure free to 20 months after surgery. Slide four demonstrates two key points. The first is that MEG can see mesial temporal sources, and the second is that mixing MEG and EEG signals in the same space as EMSL does not necessarily improve the localization accuracy of these source solutions. Due to a lead lag effect, in this case the MEG source being seen 25 milliseconds prior to the EEG source. The combined solution taking off at the same time as the single MEG source solution demonstrates restriction to the left anterior pole. Slide 5 is from the same patient as the previous slide where the, MEG, the earlier MEG source solution changed the surgical plan in that a hippocampal depth electrode was placed in addition to a lateral temporal grid. The seizure captured at bottom left demonstrates clear onset in the hippocampal depth anterior electrodes 30 seconds prior to propagation to the inferior margin of the lateral temporal grid. Following resection in magenta, the patient was seizure free to 20 months. Pathology showed cortical dysplasia type 1C at the entorhinal cortex. In contradistinction to the last case, this case demonstrates the value of ESL over MSL in interrogating an ictal average discharge, the ESL appearing 25 milliseconds before the MSL at right. The MSL, EML, EMSL solution gave the same, same result as the MSL solution. Patient seizure free at 22 months following resection in magenta, which did not include the MSL or EMSL result and only included the ESL result. Histology coming back as a cortical dysplasia once again. Slide 7 demonstrates the value of source localization in assessing extended complex lesions, in this case a large right frontoparietal dysplasia, with MSL seeing the source at face before propagation up towards hand. MSL gave a similar solution. But importantly, ESL at left, 23 milliseconds later, sees onset at hand. With this information in mind, a large grid was placed, extending right across the dysplasia, and a very small area demarcated by the four red electrodes represents seizure onset, with an even smaller resection made. Despite this size of resection, patient had a significant improvement in their post-operative outcome with 
severe disabling seizures becoming non-disabling brief seizures out of sleep. Here are the four key findings. First is that modelling the earliest signal is a better marker of the epileptogenic zone. Two, source localisation done independently rather than combined is more informative. Three, MEG can detect mesial temporal sources. And four, MEG is not always more accurate than EEG. It's about modelling the earliest feature.